Uh, hello everybody, I'm going to do a quick but hopefully simple to follow tutorial about um, projections, shapes, copying um, from one side of a train to another uh, to make things quicker and to get a uh, sort of more polished finish for your design. Um, let's start with the IC. I'm using 403 but uh, everyone who has TSW2 will have the 406. Um, they're the same train basically. Um, what I'm going to do to start is uh, I'm going to make it, uh, let's see, I'm going to make it a bit whiter. Um, it's good to do things like this and get used to quickly moving around with the controls of a PS4 um, because the more muscle memory you develop, the quicker it is to do tedious tasks like this and therefore you don't have to think about it. Um, and you can just come in, do it. Um, so, go like that. You'll see later on why it's good to be able to move between the carriages fast. Um, because um, if you're copying shapes from one carriage to another, and you want them along the whole train, it, it's so much easier if you if you just know the buttons to press without thinking about it. Um, so, if you know what kind of design you want, the best thing to do is to focus on the simple big bits first. And if these are bits that are going to be on both sides of the train, it's easier to just do them on one side of the train, group them, and then project them onto the other side of the train. And you'll see what I mean by that now. So I'm going to create uh, a new layer. It's going to be a shape and I'm going to do a square. And I'm going to put it on the left side because that's the side with the light so it's easiest to see for everyone. Uh, I'm going to go down and I'm going to make it like this I think. I'll make it a darker colour so it's easier to see. Um, nice dark grey I think. Uh, confirm that. And then I'm going to press L1 to move to the other um, scale and stretch options. And then I'm going to use the right stick to stretch that out uh, horizontally. I'll zoom out. Do that. Now the shapes, uh, the size of the carriages are different. So if you're going to be copying to every carriage, I would just go keep stretching it be, even though it's covered the front carriage because if any other carriage is a bit longer than this you find this on the TGV especially um, the second carriage is really long for some reason um, so if any carriage is longer and you you've cop you're using the layers from a shorter carriage it might not fit and therefore you might have to stretch it again um, and it's easier to just over stretch it here um, so that's done and to make things simpler if I just copy that um, and I've got exactly the same shape in exactly the same place. I press square to copy um, and if I move that then I can move it up like that. Now let's say I want to change the colour of that to be red. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap so that there's a white line um, that's just the paint underneath. Um, and again, I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to move it up. And you see it'll cover the roof. And I'm going to make that a different color again. Uh, I'm going to make that black. Now, that's only one half of the train. The other half of the train is empty. Um, if I go into here and I group them, so to group them, you select each one in the little circle next to the um, thumbnail of the layer uh, and then press triangle, that's one group. Now what that means is that I'm not going to have to individually project each one of those layers onto the side. What I can do is I can go in here, I can press options and I can go to projection settings and it starts in the middle. Um, the projection setting so it's at 50% um, and then if I go to 100% what's going to happen is it's going to project it to the other side in exactly the same way so now I've basically created three shapes 
well I created one shape and copied it twice changed the color um, and then projected it and I've covered the whole carriage in a simple color scheme um, but color schemes like British Rail most of the old ones you can do these in like five minutes because they use very simple shapes um, I guess the livery designers of the 70s didn't have the fancy paints and the fading um, decals they have now um, decals um, right so now I'm gonna do the whole train like this and again this is where the muscle memory I talked about from doing the paint comes in useful so I click here see the, the option at the bottom L1 copy to other cars press L1 move to the next car I'm you can tell the cars in the top left hand corner because it, they have different names um, so here done it's copied to this car press L1 again next one done now you have to be careful when you're doing it <laughs> not to copy it more than to the same the car you started with you can, you can if you go too quick it's very easy especially on the ICE because the two um, the front and rear carriage are identical so you only ever have to do one and it'll copy it automatically to the other so look there we are what it's been less than five minutes and that whole train is covered both sides in a simple livery matching um, now let's say we want to put some text in this is where the projection tool can't really be used um, but there's a way to make sure you um, have even text all lined up in the same place on both sides so let me start with a new layer and do some text and I'm gonna do I'll keep it simple I could try and be fancy but I'm just gonna keep it simple um, the side picked always defaults to the size you're on um, or the layer you've selected um, so I don't have to specifically select the left side now um, here I'm going to put a now for text if you're using the text here and you're not going to try and create your own font using shapes um, the easiest way to keep the shape and size um, identical is to copy this so if I copy that piece of text that text layer at the bottom you'll see I still have the triangle for decals if I press that and go back into text change that to a B I've copied the text of a B I've changed the A that I copied into a B at exa of exactly the same size and shape on exactly the same level. So if I just scroll across, there, done. I have two matching, uh, the writing is all lined up. Now, if I do that again uh, here, uh, no, I need to change the decal first and then do C. There we go. All I have to worry about is making sure the spacing between the three is equal. Not necessarily easy, but it's much better than starting um, with lots of different shape sizes and then trying to uh, scale them to be the same size. Now, again, group these if you're not going to move them anymore. So that's that. And with that, I can move it all as a group and I don't have to worry about things getting out of control now here's why projection doesn't work with writing if I project this to the other side what's gonna happen is it's gonna do it but it's gonna do it as a mirror so you, it's gonna be the wrong way around so if you wrote railway on the side of that or express it's not gonna make any sense on one side so in order for that not to happen, let me put the projection settings back to the middle. There's no way of knowing it's exactly in the middle, but I think if it's generally there, it'll be gone. Let me have a check. Yep, gone. And if I want that layer, that text layer to be in exactly the same place on the other side and the white way around so it can be read, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to press square to copy, creates a new group with new layers, and then I'm going to click onto that. I'm going to press options and I'm going to change side. I'm going to change it to the right side. Press confirm. And there we have it. Identical on both sides. Right way around can be read properly. 
Now the drawback to this is that I now have two separate layers. So if I wanted that text to be in the same place on both sides, I'm going to have to copy it on both sides. Um, so I'm going to copy it to every carriage just for a demonstration. And go back to the first carriage. You see how it's copied it all down that side, but because this is a separate layer now, I'm going to have to do it again down this side. There's no way around that. Um, but again, it's much easier than writing it individually every single time on a carriage and trying to make it all look the same. Um, there's a lot more you can do with this if you're um, going to be, if you really want to make the more detailed shapes, but this is just like a general overview. Um, so I'm going to save that. I actually quite like these colors. I might do something with this. Um, I think it looks a bit like the uh, Swiss Railways. Um, but yeah, I hope that's a simple way that I've explained it so it can be understood. Um, and it makes the livery editor seem a little bit more accessible and easy to use. Um, personally, I think it's actually a really, once you've got to know it, I think it's quite intuitive, quite easy to use. Um, compared to some that I've used. Considering the complexity of carriages, it's not like a car where you've just got one object. Um, there's multiple carriages, multiple sides, doors galore, windows everywhere. Um, it's quite, once you get into the rhythm of using it and you know how to get this kind of shapes you need, um, it's, quite, it's quite intuitive and it's quite useful. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this helpful. Bye.